This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 465, and uh, we are on a special day, special time, because we had a little bit of a scheduling thing. One of our other shows is doing a, a live on location for a charity event on Tuesday night, so we're joining you on this Monday evening in a rainy Pittsburgh, live from the Sorgamon, Sorgatron Studios. <laughs> Pittsburgh, PA. We're doing so great with this. We'll take another sip of my coffee as I introduce the Prof Pod on Twitter. Uh, Dave Podner. See, I need to work it into your intro to make sure I get it in. That'll help me. But also of the Tiny Shutter podcast. Yes. Um, Thanks so much for having me on on this very special episode. Very special episode. This is where we're going to have an intervention with Podner about, I don't know, pumpkin spice lattes. (laughs) Actually, that's probably me. That's going to be the problem. Uh, Wait, wait. We got to illustrate the visual here because you got the cat is just hanging out. It just, I'm not used to a cat to stay so still. Mine is just forever moving. And, um, and, and, And a little pumpkin. We got a mm-hmm, pumpkin. Yeah. We got a cat. We got pumpkin cat. We, or pumpkin I guess cat, cat pumpkin. A little cat plus pumpkin. between them. Yeah. So. <laughs> She's chill. She, 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 she is just beyond chill. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me here. Of course, producer is Miss, producer Missy is here as well um, on the mic. And uh, she has she actually has a lot of stories with us this week, too. So let's get into it. Uh, again, check out everything at awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Email producer Missy over there at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, if you're interested to be in studio, I understand I, I got some word in November. We're going to have a lot of in-studio guests on, on one of the nights. Um, so looking forward to that. Uh, more information soon as it develops. Um, and also, if you're interested in any advertising opportunities, if you're listening on the on the feed, of course, uh, we have a couple of great advertisers that have been uh, with us for the last couple of weeks. Some great stuff around Pittsburgh. Uh, so really uh, appreciating that and appreciating support from our friends at Post Industrial Audio uh, with a lot of that. You can also subscribe and rate us over on your favorite podcast app. Watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. You can also ask your Google Home, Amazon Echo, or whatever voice app to play Awesome Cast Podcast. And, uh, of course, we are live usually kind of sort of every Tuesdays uh, at Facebook Live, 7 p.m. Eastern. But, of course, we are streaming on uh, the Sorgatron Media Twitch and, uh, and our uh, YouTube page and sometimes the Twitter when I get that thing to work. Uh, so if you're doing that, please uh, checking us out live on one to be part of the chat room uh you should join us over on the awesome cast facebook page although i realize everybody's in i think everybody's in the other chat i think everybody's in my personal chat and i'm wondering why <laughs> uh i got the wrong one going over here apparently but so, there they go that's the one actually on the awesome cast page hello everybody um anyways uh so uh, uh wait where was i where i moved away from my thing there we go nope. every tuesday da, 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 if you're catching us later or you're catching a replay of this because i think we're just going to go ahead and replay the <laughs> tuesday night at the regular time so it's like you never missed us uh you can hashtag on twitter at awesome cast hashtag ac uh 465 thank you to our audio partners our friends at the 405 media.com streaming us like practically every day over there check the listings and over at uh, uh thanks to our friends also sharing like i mentioned before post industrial audio doing a lot of great things we'll actually have matt stroud uh of post industrial on the show next week to join us um i always love to get a real journalist on the show every once in a while you know so you know we we try <laughs> but uh always fun to do that and get uh and get some different uh, perspective also thank you our patreon uh, supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller john diggy DeGore, and john carmen and our longest running patreon supporter michael fedora at the fan of the show dollar level thank you so much again please support the show if you like what we're doing and uh want to help us grow here at patreon.com slash awesome cast all right it is time for our awesome things of the week dave did you did you have one ready to go 
Uh, I know this is is a last minute thing, so. (laughs) No, no no problem. I do have a thing. Um, Basically, this is a chain for iOS 13. Okay. That came out. So, and this goes, as long as your phone can take live photos, you can do this. This is your, this is your 2B in the dock. Is that right? This is is my 2B. Mm. My, my, my Shakespeare tip. My 2B tip. Your 2B awesome. It's to be awesome. Uh, the idea here, and this is something that has been around in another app for a while. Yep. Sorry, sorry about this. <laughs> we got, we got, oh, there's a dog. Oh, no. <laughs> we got dog problems on the show now. We do, yes. Multiple dogs, multiple. You have that when you went into that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work. Okay. Podcast issues. Uh. Yay. <laughs> Uh, okay. You were talking about live photos. I was talking about live photos. I love and... I love live podcasting. This is why I love live <laughs> podcasting. Uh, deep breath. Okay. So, uh, yeah, live photos, which I'm a big fan of with the with, with the iPhone. Not mm-hmm. only in terms of oh, I just missed something, but oh, now I can fix it by going forward or back. Mm-hmm. But also, oh, there's something that is highly moving going along that's really hard to catch anyway with the photo with the photo Mm -hmm. that you can make a little loop out of it well with ios 13 you can now select multiple photos and if you hit the little square with the arrow on the bottom left that is your normal sharing option like if you're going to airdrop it or send it in a message you have the option to make it into a video so you can take I don't know if there's a limit, to be honest. I did around... The thing is, the more photos you take, the longer it takes to process. And if you have an older phone, it can get kind of long and hard. It can get kind of get bogged down. But I, one time I did like a 12-photo combination. And it made it into a nice little 26-second video. Hmm. So that way you can... You don't have to think, well, I would love to take a video of this, but I want to take a photo now you do all, you always have the option with iPhones to if you're taking a video to take a snot to take a snapshot, but those are lower quality. This you're using the actual photos and you're making it into a nice little video that it just saves it just straight as a video and then you can save it out. And if you take um, not not rapid fire photos, but photos would happen pretty close together, the video actually flows pretty nice. And that way, if you're like I was at a uh, a wedding over the weekend and I was taking photos of the uh, cake part, you know, shoving cakes in each other's faces type thing that brides and grooms tend to do. Mm -hmm. And I was it got got four or five shots out of it, but it made it into a nice little video, which kind of the edits weren't too bad. So it made it to a nice thing where I could also not only have a nice photo out of it, but I could make a little video to sh- share to the bride and groom saying, well, here's a little, here's what you guys look like when you were doing this. So that, and that is new for iOS 13. Like I said, it, it goes as long as you can take live photos, I, which go pretty far back with iPhones, uh, you can make them into videos. So and I'm looking because does it, does this feature get like turned off on updates sometimes? Because I, I thought mine was on, and now the I'm finding photos? yeah I'm finding it hasn't been on for a while as I look back through my hmm. photos. When live photos first came out, a lot of suggestions were to turn them off because the quality was degraded a little bit. Mm-hmm. But in the last couple phones, iPhone eight. 10 generation going on it's not you can't notice the difference you really can't notice the difference anymore Mm -hmm. and unfortunately this is a with apple they don't have the options and the settings in the camera app they have it in the general settings Mm -hmm. so if you're want to do changes to a camera setting in terms of let's say the output or if you're doing slow motion, you want to change how, you know, the, the frame rate for your slow motion. You got to go to the settings app, make your changes and go back to your camera app, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah, that is a bit that is a pain in the butt. Yeah, um, I, I was amazed because I actually got into some of the editing. Uh, we took some pictures 
uh, mm -hmm. yet last night at the wrestling show. Um, somebody being seductive with a road cone. Um, <laughs> it, there's, a, there's a reason there's a reason in character it's 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 a thing um they do things different in west virginia okay uh but uh, uh but I, it was my first chance i'm like oh i want to spruce this up but i don't want to like bring it in another app and and look for filters or something i didn't have anything top of mind to go do that and i was like oh wait isn't there stuff here and, and seeing all the options and i just you know wanted to add a little bit of tint or something to it to make mm -hmm. it i don't know seductive or uh so um but uh but uh yeah i'm really impressed about how much is going on in there also impressed i accidentally stumbled on photoshop for ipad but, oh yeah uh photoshop uh what, what photoshop express oh okay uh, and okay, i had yeah. not played with it too much yet yeah. um but uh but i started poking that a little bit uh last night too but anyways a lot of a lot of cool photos and, and again this is it's amazing how much we can get done on here you know, yeah. I, I know plenty of, you know, I mentioned the pro wrestling, a lot of those guys, when you're seeing them doing a lot of the social media stuff, they're doing it all on their phone, right? Yeah. Like I, I talked, I chatted with a guy that's really great with social media a couple weeks ago and he was doing these pictures and uh, he was, he was taking old like WWE Divas swim shoot, suit uh, uh, pictures okay, and, and okay. he was redoing them and then putting them side by side. And oh, he was like on nice. vacation at the beach drinking <laughs> drunk and he was putting these together so these collages would go out of tweets i'm just like that is amazing you know but again that's the guys that figure this out you know and and figure out all the things their phone can do like that you know right. it, i mean there's so many tools for them to do that so. yeah yeah and, and they're and they build in a lot more in ios 13 like if you need to um one thing they added new which is a big help if you need to actually change your perspective mm-hmm that's oh, now yeah. built in. Yeah, that's yeah. now built in. That that is nice, especially like if you're taking building shots, you're looking up, but you notice, oh, uh, the it's skewed off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting uh, Square It, which is a great app, but I think it's like five dollars. Um, it does a better job, but if you just need something simple, and qu simple and quick and easy, it's built into the phone. Excellent, which well, is nice. Well, from that, uh, uh, Missy has an interesting. Uh, awesome thing of the week as well. Missy, what do you got? Are you on mic over there? There you are. Yeah, I, I have it muted when I'm not on because you don't like it to hear me tapping. Yeah, tell me about Dermal Abyss. That so, sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it was actually it was something I found on Facebook. Uh, it was a tattoo project that essentially responds to pH levels and glucose levels in the body. Hmm. So it was being tested through MIT, but there's the, the sad thing about it is there's nothing that they're going to move forward with it. But essentially what it was is they were using pig skin as their test skin and they would have it react to a color changing ink. So if the pH level was high or low, the ink would appear or it would turn a different color. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the glucose levels. So my dad's a diabetic who doesn't like to prick his finger and test whenever he needs to have his diabetes checked and it was kind of interesting because instead of having to prick your finger four times a day or, or more in some circumstances that it would essentially you just get a nice tattoo and there you go so I thought that it was a kind of a cool project I shared it along uh my mom actually responded and she said that that would be really cool if we could do that for my dad because again it's something that he doesn't necessarily like to check it Mm -hmm. but if somebody is with him and they know that if the tattoo changes that he needs to do something to either decrease his, his blood glucose level or bring it up that, you know, we would be able to react accordingly. Uh, I think that with children with diabetes, this would also be kind of cool because again, you wouldn't have to do the finger prick every mm -hmm. time you turn around uh, to, to make sure the kid's diabetes glucose level is all right. Um, that, that you'd be able to kind of monitor that. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was kind of a cool thing out of MIT and it would be awesome if somebody could fund it to actually make it a legit thing. That's awesome. And, and, uh, we, we have linked, uh, the video, but there's also a link to the actual MIT project itself. So this is cool. So, you know, kind of a color coding, uh, kind of situation there. Um, that's, that's cool. They, they could do, they could, there's a lot of possibilities with that. Awesome. So my my awesome thing of the week. I've been playing a lot with YouTube, guys. I've been really kind of poking at like the what can we do with YouTube. 
Um, got some stuff uh, um, kind of at... Uh, uh, I, I've been I've been working with Twitch. I've been working with YouTube. I'm always working with the platforms, trying to figure out like what makes sense with it, right? And uh, had some stuff get uh, to a certain point where I could I could play with it uh, uh, and use some of the more higher end YouTube tools. Uh, and of course, one of the biggest issues that I have is you know especially some of the stuff what we do. There's a lot of music in there and just kind of incidental music, um, entrance music, whatever the case may be. And that always gets flagged on YouTube. And then you start having like, hey, this is, for instance, anytime there's Thunderstruck from ACDC or anything ACDC, your video is gone. <laughs> okay. So um, so I'm going in and playing with some of the tools. And they do have some good, um, some different options. Uh, there's cover song options in, and you know, if you're like doing your own cover song, you'll do a revenue share. Um, but, but I was looking at the muting options. Um, you're able to replace, and they've had these for a little bit, but they look like they're a little more, uh, interesting now. So let's say, you know, dude comes out the, the thunderstruck, but I still want to use that part of the video. You can replace that audio. They also have an option. You can replace it with another song in their library. So it's going to be like random rock song number three, <laughs> you know, something like that. You know, um, some of us know if we watched old WWE stuff where they don't want to pay for like Metallica uh, because somebody used to come out to it. It gets really awkward really fast. Um, but uh, but but they have that ability for little things that you put out. Um, and, and they have a, this is in beta, but I thought this was kind of cool that this was an option. It's kind of like you said it, it goes through and it lets you know, and it'll be on, you know, maybe it'll come back, the video will come back up in a couple hours after it's processed. Um, but they have one option that is mute the music, but keep the rest of the audio. So this is probably like, Hey, ACDC is playing in the background, but it's like, there's a conversation in the foreground can we remove that? So this doing, and that is a level of audio engineering I am not familiar with. You know, to to take wow. that background, like I can take out background noise, but to take a background song out is is something a, a lot different, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's kind of like again those kind of tools for the job kind of situation. So, um, and I really don't like YouTube's new studio interface. I'm still not liking it. <laughs> But there is other stuff in there. There are there's a trim editor um, in there too. If I'm like, well, let's just hack off the front of this because you know the video went up, you know, and and I left something on it or something, right? Instead of me just go processing and reposting it and losing that link and everything like that and all the stats to something, um, there's there's some there's some pretty good options in there. And it's been cool to kind of throw some different content on it that we've had and and kind of see how that um, how that behaves, right? So. So if you're if you're into that, you know, uh, and you, you have that like, oh, I got this great video, but it happened at a concert and it knocks things out. But the music is not as important. Uh, you can play with that a bit. So, oh, YouTube. <laughs> I mean, that is some, uh, that is especially when you have someone talking, you have the music in the background. Right. Like you're in a coffee that, shop that, or something. Right. Yeah. That that's really I mean, if you think about it, you would almost have to look at the waveforms and figure out what one's which and mm -hmm. to have the computer do it on its own is pretty uh, amazing. You know, the magic word is machine learning, right? Yeah. yeah true, true. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is it is like, well, whatever I do on YouTube, it's just throwing this process at their billions of teraflops, trillions, yeah. quadrillion, whatever. Um, you know, it just throwing it, throwing it in the queue and see what happens is kind of where we're at there, you know, so, and you're helping make it better by, by contributing things. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. So one day when something happens and the rights change on the music that we have for this show and it blocks <laughs> everything off the internet, we just got to go hit a button and say, take out the awesome cast song and let's replace it with Warren G and we're good. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I wish I could, but I haven't seen that. Like, can I just replace a song with my own song? You know, like, hey, here's a song I have rights to. Can I just replace that across the board kind of thing? But I don't know. That, that, that'd probably be a little bit more to that. But Hey, you know what's also awesome? We don't have any tonight because it's an off night, and we don't like to bother the guys if uh, if we're not doing our big Tuesday. Also, it, it's just us here. Potter's, like, still at home hanging with his cats, so he yeah. wouldn't be able to participate. <laughs> no, I mean, I would love I, I think I know where you're going with this, and there's the people with the very perfect doors yes. with the... Pe perfect pepperoni pizza 
<laughs> yes, also supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper, and he beats our friends a slice on Broadway because uh, Dave has a has a kick the door in and tell him that you that awesome cast sent you uh, thing that we've been doing a wrestling ma'am show um, here in Beachview, uh, right up the street, Carnegie PA East End and PNC Park. Uh, they have been from one location to across the city. And uh, it's it's great. It's great to be like in a part of town and realize, oh, I can stop in and have slice. And it's like I'm it's like I'm back in my neighborhood. Uh, so go check them out. A Pittsburgh original slice on Broadway dot com. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter and uh, get your slice on. Hey, just to toss in a really quick uh, check in with our friend Chachi. Uh, he's, of course, continuing on his 1,001 game journey. He's hitting a lot of those uh, 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 Super Nintendo games, too. He's hitting stuff on Earthbound. Earthbound's a fun one. And we were I was talking to him about this a couple a uh, couple weeks ago, about how Earthbound is a game that's not very good. Um, nobody liked it when it came out in 1995. <laughs> or no, before 1995. No, no, 1995. That's right. Um, the sequel hit, hit the U.S. in 2015, but it was one of those that like like the character popped up in Smash Brothers, and everybody's like, "We got to check this game out." And now everybody wants to play Earthbound, and it's rare because nobody bought it back in the day. <laughs> so, and it's something called Cybernator. <laughs> what is this thing? So it, it was like a, a I don't know if it's a Terminator ripoff or something like that, a Konami game, um, but uh, interesting uh, side scroller. So see what other like you know oddball stuff that he's, he's finding over there at uh, thegamejourney.com. Um, also, just kind of looking at the board, Riz had a really interesting one. Uh, so Wendy's, we know Wendy's, you know, trolling McDonald's, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, over Always. over the years and everything. So this was this was pretty interesting. So they apparently, Wendy's, the burger chain, Wendy's. I'm setting you up here. They made a tabletop RPG role playing game where you battle Ronald McDonald. Not directly, it's it's, but it's a very, uh, as say, as I say here in the IGN article, or at least a vaguely reminiscent, not not legally actionable likeness. So, um, okay, uh, yeah. Is the, the, do we join the fight against the dark heart of frozen beef? Uh, our first tabletop RPG first. First, imp- implying there may be more Feast of Legends. You can download it for free, of course, tabletop. So that means they, they, they're and they're saying. The, I was reading the article. Um, it, it, so, it looks like a simplified version. If you're familiar with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, um, five. Um, it, it, what does the E stand for? Is that expanded, extended? Uh, uh, so, so it's a familiar thing. And so it is in, and it's you can download it, and you can. Is this a there's some art from the feast rule book um wow i i don't know man <laughs> who's gonna I mean, play I this mean, i mean looking at wendy there um i'm thinking wendy doesn't eat many dave triples there oh you're talking uh well i mean the wendy wendy didn't nope that's true <laughs> there's a lot of armor there's a, i love the armor yeah. and then like, there's the shirt is still there too <laughs> <laughs> so, like the the striped shirt. Uh, what is with the big big potato with a witch hat? That's oh man, it, it, this might just be a good read in the long run, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Order of the double stack, <laughs> skills by level. Order of the big potato. Oh, this is great. You can go check that out and download it. And if you're um, a little more of a, I, I I'm I, I I've only dabbled in tabletop RPG. And uh, you, some of you dungeon match masters out there, let me know what you think about that one. Oh, geez, what else we got here? This was a fun one. Um, apparently, Tesla will let you customize your car's horn and movement sounds. And and I wanted to ask, I, I was I, I, this was one that was just this afternoon, so probably doesn't have enough time to get in front of everybody. But I wanted to ask everybody. What would your uh, custom sounds be for your Tesla? Um, it'll eventually include Monty Python or coconut horse claps. <laughs> I didn't read that part before. Um, yeah, you can completely customize. This was a thing um, because, you know, a while ago we've talked about like, I don't know, Chevy or Ford or somebody was talking about how they were going to start like 
making a tone in their vehicles because you can never hear the car coming, right? Yeah. But now they've like, of course, Tesla being Tesla has completely just upgraded <laughs> this thing. Um, uh, we had uh, it, <laughs> uh, uh, Alex out there in California. He said, uh, I mean, this is an opportunity to have my own the Homer. So uh, there's that option. Uh, Missy, you had a good option uh, that you included uh, when we were conversing about this earlier. Oh, yeah. I was totally going to just my vehicle when it accelerates will be vroom, vroom. And it will literally be me just saying vroom, yeah. vroom. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> vroom, and vroom, vroom. Going around a corner will be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that seems right. That seems right. That works. That works. It's like all the all the car noises that you made as a kid, yeah. playing with your you know little cars and stuff. Hear, that's that's what you're gonna it's do. It's gonna be amplified. You just hear it going down the road. It's like what is going on? You just see it go by, and it's just it's a Tesla, and just like mm, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I'm surprised that I mean because I have a Honda Insight, mm-hmm. the, the 2019, and when it does go under five miles an hour in electric mode, it does play. It plays a little song, mm-hmm. uh, just so you know. Once you're once you're electric going that slow, you don't hear it. Mm-hmm. So it plays like a little a little tune as it goes along, but you don't. But you're stuck with whatever what, what they give you. I, I, every time, I'm sorry. Well, I every would, time I, I hear would, about that, I just in in my yeah. mind I think about the ice cream man. Thank you, because that's what through. I was just yes. gonna say is everybody's gonna have the ice cream man, and. It's going to play faster and faster, depending on how fast you're driving. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm sorry, Dave. I, I, I completely no, 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 you. no, no, no. Or, or I could see, I can see huge licensing things here. Can I get Samuel Jackson? Get out of the way, yeah, Pepper. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're accelerating, um, because this song was used in a Toyota car ad. Mm-hmm. John Cena's music. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> like everywhere you drive yeah. into, can't be like, can it? Can the song just start playing when I get under five miles an hour because I'm pulling into a spot or through the parking lot? So it is like literally like a pre-show. It is is basically like is basically a, an entrance theme. Like I've come mm-hmm. and I've arrived yeah. to this place, yep. and it's just playing this song. Yep. Just like, <laughs> just like. I don't know, yeah. a scene from Friday or something. <laughs> a lot of options. Uh Potter, you you have you we have a sports story. We got sports ball. <laughs> and a friends for Pittsburgh Bull Sports. <laughs> Our Bull Pittsburgh Sports, I keep saying it backwards. Uh, uh uh chimed in on this a little bit to correct me on it uh. too. So so what happened to Big Ben Roethlisberger? <laughs> well, Honestly, I, I did this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, second of all, it's something that kind of happened to me. Okay. Um, ben was on the sideline with his arm in a sling and in a cast because he had a, had a surgery on his arm. Mm-hmm. And apparently this is, uh, like you said, Steve was, was, was coming in saying his wife, of course, anyone who's ever had any arm issues, it's really hard to get dressed by yourself. Yes. So his wife helped him on and she put on his watch, his Apple watch. Now mm-hmm. this would be true if they, if they use a Samsung watch too. It just happens to be Apple. Of course, anytime you put Apple on anything, everyone wants to becomes a big story. Yeah, exactly. We hear it on but, all my Apple podcasts this week. Yeah. And you know what? It would be true with the Fitbit too, mm-hmm. but because you're not allowed to wear anything on uh, that can message Mm-hmm. And that's part of the uniform policy for the NFL. Say ben no, was no okay. communication device, right? Yep, yep. Now, of course, you think, of course, my cell phone's gone. I have no communication device. Well, if you have the cellular phone, the cellular watch, mm-hmm. you can make calls. You can do text. Um, you know, it can do all. It, basically, it's a it's a phone. Mm-hmm. Or watch if you have the cellular one. So he was fined five thousand dollars for having communication device on himself. <laughs> Jeez. While on the field, which is just completely crazy. Wow. The fact that you don't, people don't, and, and watches in my mind for, for the average, if you looked around a few years ago, no one was wearing a watch. You know, it, everyone was like, oh, why do I need a watch? I have a cell phone to look at the time. 
Um, there's no re and then all of a sudden fitness trackers and fitness watches. And now you're starting to see people wear watches again. So, so this is interesting because there's a little more background on top of this uh, that 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 Steve adds. Again, please mm-hmm. go check out um, Bold Pittsburgh Sports on iTunes and uh, other fine podcast places and over at SoccerTronMedia.com. Uh, so, so this is the role as a state is all electronics on the sidelines um, are are managed by NFL. Uh, players can't be on social media one hour before or one hour after the game. Uh, do, 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 do. the iPads that they they use, which actually I think are Microsoft Services still. Last I knew, um, yeah, uh, they, they're they're used to see replays, coverages that are only uh, visible of what the NFL cameras show. So there's nothing additional. They're literally like getting a feed and, and only they're like they're locked into NFL in, information only on those things. I guess um, he says this goes back to the Spygate controversy with uh, the the New, or- New England uh, Patriots. Um, and an MLB coach was busted last season using an Apple Watch to steal signs with people in the stands and from people watching at home to relay steals, bunts, and even pitches. Yeah, that's huh. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I mean, I mean, baseball been people in baseball have been stealing signs for decades on decades. Mm-hmm. You know, you had people standing sitting in the outfield with um binoculars trying to steal the sign from the catchers and then Mm -hmm. somehow relay it into the infield by hand signals and you know so that that doesn't shock me wow but one thing where it kind of affected me was and this was a couple weeks ago uh happened to have to go um to the emergency room everything turned out good nothing happened but uh of course you go to emergency room a lot of places you have to go through a metal detector yes and of course, you know, you take your wallet out, you take your phone out. I go through and I beep. And I'm like, OK, um, I don't have any metal on me. And they said, well, we're going to have to wind you. I said, no, I understand. You know, so you stand out there and you, you know, you give the touchdown pose <laughs> while they while they want appropriate, you. appropriate for this story. Exactly. And as I'm putting my hand up and he's starting to want me, I look around and say, oh, and I, I had my. um. I didn't have a, I had a, the, the rubberized Nike watch band on. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a metal watch band, but I looked and said, oh, I bet you it's my watch that did. He said, yeah, it was your watch, but I just didn't want to, you know, but we have to do it proper. I said, no, I, I understand completely, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't think about, and also they're light enough. You don't think, oh, I have to take this big heavy thing off my wrist mm-hmm. because it's, basically a computer on my wrist so and it's interesting because you know i and some some detectors don't do it and some Mm. do and um also like i've had an issue with uh, tsa like i can't get a belt buckle that i can't take off to get through my tsa pre-check lately like i got a smaller one and it still trips it and then like (laughs) the last time i went through tsi the guy the tsa the guy's like or actually, no, I think it was actually at the at PBG Arena last uh, WB show that I was in. Um, it went through, and I'm like, oh, it's my belt, probably. And he says, you know, if you just put your hands kind of over it, like, it won't go off. I'm like, I don't think he should have told me that. No. <laughs> so, no. I don't know. I like, do I try that with TSA? I don't know. <laughs> no. No, so, no, 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 no. Well, we'll see. I, I would say try, try it. Try it. Yeah, I mean, there is a there there. I think believe I, I believe there is a show coming up in a couple of Wednesdays to the PPG arena uh, or not, not the PPG, Peterson. but to the Pete, the Pete. Yes, to the Pete. And I don't know if the Pete has metal detectors or not, but that would be interesting to try it there. Be interesting because I didn't have a problem going into a courthouse the other day. Oh, which was also scary <laughs> when yeah. I think about it. Like my watch didn't. Well, the uh, uh, Missy wore her watch through it. Said it didn't go off. My belt buckle didn't go off. I was like, all right. Now my yeah. watch did go off. You it took did. you took your watch off and put it in the thing with your phone. Oh, that's why he did. He want you? I don't yeah. Remember him wanting? You. No, he wanted me, and I told him that it's probably my watch okay. because it had set it off the week before. Okay. Um, it was a rough day. <laughs> so, <laughs> can't remember everything, but anyways. Hey, you know what? When you're having a rough day, you just gotta get the hell out of New York City and out of town, <laughs> and need to get to JFK. You know, it is available. We talked about this before, but it is available to everyone now. Uber Copters two hundred dollar trips to JFK are now available to everyone. So, uh, Steve, once again, um, 
he, he said on Viceland they actually did a comparison of of the Uber Copter, uh, and this is going from like Manhattan to JFK. So it's like I want to beat the traffic or whatever. But they're like, and, and I think I even said in this like y- you don't really, it's not really going to save you time overall, maybe. Um, but uh, let's see, a lot of my <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's man. It's it's Uber getting into some interesting <laughs> side bets. I think we talked about. I don't know if we talked about it on this show, but like Uber is also doing. Um, they want to be like the app for everything, like basically the app for your life. Like to you know, hey, I'm going to get on a train, so Uber is going to take care of your ticket kind of thing, and and everything else with travel and your day to day, like that kind of thing. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you're a person that's like, I need to get from Manhattan to to JFK on a regular basis, like this is probably, you know, the height of luxury <laughs> well, <laughs> accessibility. I, I mean, I hate to say luxury because New York City getting there two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much more luxurious that it would be. I don't know about Uber, but mm-hmm. you know, if you're willing to to take a helicopter, you're probably getting a limo. So I can't imagine a limo from Manhattan to JFK being cheap. No, no, no. But and it, you know, especially if you go with the nicer limo company, where you're not going with you know, mm-hmm. like I said, you're, if you're a vice president manager somewhere where you're not, you know, good luck getting there and hope you get there early on your own. But you know, if the company's taking care of you, mm-hmm. so this is interesting. So so um, the Engadget article that we were worried on this. And saying, you know, it may not save you time. It took a, a reporter from their their uh, Manhattan offices uh, in Midhand, uh, do, 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 in Mid- Midtown Manhattan. It said seventy minutes because they still needed to use public transportation and two Uber rides to get to and from the heliport. So, yeah. yeah. So, well, do 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 do. So that's about the time that it would take you to get to JFK, anyways. So mm. now it was, Uber says that they are um, attempting to. Uh, to, to, to get more service, get get more heliport access throughout Manhattan. So there's that too. There are a lot of, I guess there is a lot of heliports in Manhattan. There's a lot of buildings. So um, one day, one day we'll be able to take our Uber copter ride to the airport from downtown Pittsburgh. I'm sure. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, we got a few stories from the week. Um, uh, Missy has some cookware she's interested in. <laughs> <laughs> Missy? Well, the Star Wars cookware will go perfectly mm-hmm. with my Vader apron. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> my R2D2 measuring cup and measuring spoon set. Yes. So they're like, they look like crock pots, right? Is that what they are? Yes. And there's an R2D2, there's a C3PO, and there's a, a, um, a BB 8 <laughs> version. Is that and there's a Han Solo Carbonite signature roaster. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome! <laughs> Thank you, Missy, for the cooking corner. Um, but you also have another one of again, this is another hyper local one. Um, with the uh hyperloop that uh, apparently we've talked, it's not it's, it's not dead yet, it's, it's, it's still a possibility out there, and you you incited so much conversation. With the Hyperloop. Tell me what's going on with that. I'm trying to do show notes over here, dude. <laughs> you have <laughs> stories in here. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> okay. It's org- I, I, you know, honestly, I was reading that, and I understand why Missy put in about who wants to go to Cleveland anyway, because, you know, there's the whole Pittsburgh-Cleveland football thing, because really, Pittsburgh and Cleveland, they'll play each other in any other. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work in in, in Cleveland lately. It's like, it's not bad. I was just poking because I know the the conflict. And look what what it happened. It got conversation started. Uh But, you you know, honestly, Pittsburgh to Cleveland doesn't interest me, but in the thing, having it part of a larger route Mm -hmm. really interests me. Listen, um, like I said, we we've been doing a little bit more work with Cleveland lately, and if you're going to tell me that I can get me and I bring a couple suitcases of equipment to go do uh, a, a job in in Cleveland and and have that expansion, 
um, and then take an Uber there to wherever I need to be, uh, uh, I'm in. <laughs> you know, uh, that that sounds that is like, hey, we have something for you to take care of this afternoon in Cleveland. I was like, cool, I'll be there. I'll be right there. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a two, that's a two hour drive uh, two two and a half hour, depending on where you're getting up there. Um, you know, I mean, we're we're doing this uh, Thanksgiving weekend. We're heading back to Cleveland uh, for some more work. And we have another colleague that does that a lot, too. A couple colleagues that do that. Uh, so, I mean, I this is a. We always talk about uh, airport access. There needs to be more direct flights to important places, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that would help the businesses in Pittsburgh. Like, to have this kind of access, like, that breaks down a barrier between two cities that are, you know, in that restructuring or post-restructuring or, you know, Rust Belt kind of phase. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing we could talk to. Uh, it's a good thing we could talk to uh, uh, Master Out of Post-Industrial about uh, next week. But um, I, I think that just lowers the barrier and just creates a lot more opportunity. So, or you get to go, uh, hey, I'm going to hang out with Neary. Where's my Hyperloop to Erie? Well, generally speaking, and, and that's just it, is if they do a Hyperloop to Cleveland, it mm -hmm. would be easy to do another branch up into Erie mm -hmm. to Buffalo and then, you know, potentially across New York State. Just connect all that. Exactly. You can also connect through... Uh, Cleveland over into Chicago and then, you know, head further west as far as that's concerned. You know, so, I mean, there, there are a lot of opportunities and possibilities that this opens. The other question that I have is, I assume <laughs> this is going to be cheaper than airfare. Uh, I would hope so. You know, I mean, because... So. I mean, the the technology for it seems like it would be. It, it could be still a premium, but if they're if they if they're able to push you know thousands of people every half an hour back and forth, then that that makes a lot of sense. Um, we had a lot of commentary, like we mentioned, um, our, our friend Brian Crawford of uh, Pittsburgh Museums. Um, yes, I was uh, just there, and their flat section of town puts anything we have to shame. There you go. We can go up there and have a drink. Uh, they got a great. Um, uh, they have a great. Uh, all you Cavs fans. Uh, you can go get some basketball. That's not college. Uh, you you can um, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They just just a generally uh, has always been a decent rock scene you know, that so, I'm aware so of. Are, you're you're missing the obvious here. Hmm. More wrestling for you. And I can go check out more <laughs> wrestling shows. <laughs> Oh, geez, I'm completely going to Cleveland like this month for us. That's too. what I'm saying. Just to watch <laughs> wrestling. Somebody hooked us up with some tickets. I was like, well, we could have always hyperlooped it. Oh, they're in West Virginia, so I don't know. <laughs> so, again, a lot of conversation there. Uh, so, thank you, everybody. If you guys want to get on that conversation, go over to the Awesome Cast uh, Facebook group. Man, so we're actually, before we move on to the next one, that actually reminds me. I saw an unrelated story, but saying how the bullet train in Japan is 50 years old. Mm -hmm. To think that... Jeez. And we have nothing like that, right? We don't... For, forget about bullet train. We don't have any way to get from... There's one train that goes across Pennsylvania mm -hmm. a day. Yeah. You know, now, eastern part of the state, much better. But, you know, if I want to uh, say, oh... Let me get, I want to go to Columbus and I don't want to drive there. Yeah. Well, Greyhound. Yeah. Oh, Dan, trust uh, me, you don't want to do that. No, no, we, we have, we have a, we have a cousin who lives in, um, uh, Western Ohio. And if he doesn't want to drive over, his only option is Greyhound. Mm -hmm. he, he's in, um, uh, Ada, uh, Lima, Ohio. So there's his nearest airports, Toledo, I think, but. It, the cost to fly from Toledo to Pittsburgh is ridiculous for how long it takes. So lots of times he'll drive down or he'll get someone to drive him down to Columbus or get a um, Greyhound and take the bus in mm -hmm. instead of driving across way, especially if he comes in the winter because you don't know what kind of. But if it, something where you could have train connections that. You know, oh, I want to go to Los Angeles. Well, more than likely, you're not going on a train, even a high speed one for that. But I want to go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Detroit. You know, oh, like I like to go to the Detroit Auto Show because that's the big one. Well, mm -hmm. even even so, so uh, if it's if it's an opportunity where I fly out of Pittsburgh to Atlanta to get a connection to Phoenix to get a connection to San Francisco, mm -hmm. yeah, if I can take a train, especially a bullet train. To get me to one of those locations, so I can s essentially skip one of those connections, I'm going to do that. Especially if it's a cheaper option for me to do so. 
So, I mean, it, even yeah. combining different things like that, I think is going to open multiple doors for people to, you know, get out and explore more things. Ah, the future. Yeah. Anything that breaks down barriers, right? Break the walls down. Break sorry. the walls down. Uh, a couple <laughs> really quick gaming and tech ones here before we head out of here. Uh, first of all, oh, you know what we didn't talk about? Screw that. We're moving on to this. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, Microsoft had some announcements last week. <laughs> Did we? That was last week, right? No, that was two weeks ago, wasn't it? That was last week. I thought this seemed familiar. I'm not going to knock talk about the two screen. I don't, unless you have any thoughts on the uh, Microsoft Duo there, partner. It's, it's over a year out before we see it. Sorry. Yeah. Nope. Oh. Let's let's talk about this Nintendo PlayStation. That has had my curiosity this entire show. Uh, see, you know I've touched this thing. What? You know I, I've seen this thing. <laughs> I touched this thing. The uh, our friends at Looking for Group. Yeah. Uh, no. The uh, replay FX. Oh, replay. The well, fellow was there with this thing, okay. and then they and then Josh and I were sitting there, and they're like, "You want to touch it?" And then they took it out of the case. I'm like, "Am I allowed? Are you sure?" So uh, we've talked about this on the show, and I think we talked about uh, you know. Checking out a replay of X. So way back in the day, Sony and Nintendo used to play nice together in the mid nineties, probably the early nineties. And they were trying to figure out their thing. Cause Sega was doing their own Sega CD for the Genesis. And they had, you had turbo graphics 16 with their CD and maybe Neo Geo was doing a thing by then. So there was a prototype and this was in Nintendo power magazine. Oh, there's a video playing over there. Come on, come on. Oh, stupid ads. Jeez. Jeez, I can't even see the pictures anymore. Um, there was a there was um, a prototype that you saw, and and this was found several years ago, of the original Nintendo PlayStation. Has the Sony PlayStation branding as we know it now? Says Sony has Nintendo controllers, has a slot for the Japanese version of uh, of uh, Super Nintendo, the Super Famicom. Uh, so of course they were you know two uh japanese based companies uh has a cd player cd unit in it and the idea was it was going to play nintendo games nintendo cd based games and it just they were connecting with sony and the technology and development of this things fell through and uh the underlying technology is what kind of got redeveloped and turned into the sony playstation that we know today uh or at least the original version of it so um, this is so the, the point is now you can buy it. <laughs> this is taking a tour. Cool. You know they they had it at uh, Replay FX. Like I said, they let us touch it. Uh, they had uh, some homebrew stuff playing on it, and they were still trying to get the CD to work. But again, that we are aware of, you couldn't get ha your hands on any demos that they were working on or anything like that. So there's it kind of you know nothing was developed for it yet, right? Uh, so uh, they have invited. So they 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 um they they're going to sell it, and they found the I mean they found this thing when they were cleaning out like an old store or something or a security you know, locker or something like that uh, several years ago. Um, so if you want to buy it, it's available. It, there was a good discussion. Uh, I forget it was here or somewhere else. I, actually, I think it was here in this article at uh, LA LAD LAD Bible. Um, yeah, and I agree with this. It'd be a shame if this thing got like to a uh uh just collector and just disappeared and nobody gets to see it anymore you mm. know so but it's out there and you can buy it so let's uh get the patreon going and uh so <laughs> the awesome cast can damn it to steal from an old movie this thing belongs in a museum <laughs> so uh please somebody of that ilk please pick it up so um I don't know. Have you, have you, do, you, do, you, do you did you know of the legend of the Sony Nintendo Sony PlayStation, Dave? I did not know that. No, no. And I'm kind of wondering because mid '90s, mm -hmm. uh, Sega would have been the competition, right? Sega was a competition. So it was them trying to beat off Sega, maybe. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I can't think of any other big game thing there was in the '90s, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was pre Xbox. So it's just kind of weird to think why would a, I mean Sony's always been massive giant company with yeah. you know with everything else so 
Yeah, it, well, and this was they were getting in with, in bed with Nintendo at first because they were. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were. I think they were developing games at the time. I remember, like, I think Sony Entertainment, and this will be the what would become the developer of all the in-house stuff, right? Um, yeah. They did uh, like the Hook ad- adaptation, the the Robin Williams Captain Hook. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know things like that. So they were already in those. In they were already in gaming and and trying to get bigger. And this was a, uh, one way they were looking to do it. And they were a good technology company, so it made sense. Um, it, it, this also kind of reminds me of there was another article reminding me about um, how Sega Dreamcast is basically the pre Xbox because how much it was running on Windows CE. Uh, had internet, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the, the Windows CE was kind of the solution because Sega Saturn was so hard to develop for and that's what killed it in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, hey, here's a Windows platform. If you can develop on Windows and we already did, uh, <laughs> we are, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. Sorry, somebody just pointed at me and said, check this out. <laughs> we got a great uh, sunset going on over the... Uh, the ridge here tonight oh, cool. <laughs> so uh you can check that out on the live stream if you're with us on that um but anyways so really it's always I, it, video game development history is all i i i fall into the gaming historian videos on youtube here and there so it just reminds me it's like i remember reading about this on game pro whatever happened to that speaking of the future and progress sometimes your things aren't going to work on the next version of mac os right partner Unfortunately not. Uh, This is something Apple just tends to do by Mm -hmm. saying, hey, we're going forward. We're breaking this. We told you about this. Too bad. It's broke. That if you upgrade to... (laughs) They've been telling us for a while, to be clear. They have been telling us for a while. Yeah, yeah. this this isn't like an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. People should know about this. The nice thing is that unlike... Because I remember when Windows 95 came out, you could download something and see what was compatible and not compatible. I mean, to go way back in time. Mm -hmm. Now there's a way that's built into the operating system that because I haven't upgraded yet because it just came out today and I did want to rush home and try to install a new operating system in a half an hour. Because that would that's, that's never a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you go to your little Apple icon on the upper left, you can actually see the legacy software, and it'll let you know what you have that's 32 bit or not. And I did a quick thing, and it's basically there's one software that I don't really use. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things you download to try, and it's like oh, I'm gonna keep it here just in case. So everything else seems to be pretty updated and, but it'll tell you exactly, you know, what's gone and what needs to be updated. And if you buy it through the Mac app store, you can update it that way. So that's a good thing at least. But yeah, yeah. so we're going 64 bit everywhere now. What was it under system preferences or what was under about, about uh, it's this under, Mac? Yeah, it's under uh, the Apple uh, menu about this Mac. Um, and when it comes up system report button, and if you scroll down, it goes to legacy software. And it'll tell you the um, the developer when you last used it. Um, like I have a I have two, one which is a soundboard app, which I tried to use once, but it didn't work out. And iMovie, believe it or not. iMovie. Yeah, a, yeah, there's a there's a 32-bit codec and a pro transcoder. Um for, for iMovie, but those are what I have. So um, I basically just it lets you know that, hey, if you use this software, it's going to break. Yeah. So which I know if you're a business, generally you have, you're, you you should wait mm-hmm. till at least the dot one, probably the dot two to upgrade. Uh, but if you have something on the side, you know, if I sell something that, um, uh, like I use Audio Hijack for when we do Tiny Shutter, and if I find out Audio Hijack will not work, which it will, but if it didn't, I would have to think, "Ooh, do I really want to upgrade or not? Do or mm-hmm. what? What alternative solutions do I have for what I use that for?" Yeah, I'm looking at it, and, and it's a lot of um, the, the 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 Windows kind of audio. I'm also I'm also kind of um, I'm also kind of in a weird login thing but i'm getting usual like adobe programs like i have like encore cs6 that's not gonna work we know that's not gonna work you know 
<laughs> things like that. And also, yeah, interestingly, I'm looking at like all the all the Mac OS Final Cut compressor. I, I think these are bits of compressor. Like I think they still have some 32 yeah. bit um, backwards compatibility. So that may be coming up. Um, the the converter I use on a regular basis. Uh, um, I know a lot of games are going to get killed on this thing. Um, so I mean that's that's going to be an issue with it. But if you got an old Mac, I'll leave it on an old, <laughs> you know, a yeah. uh, 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 version of the operating system. We've been here before. I got an iPhone four hanging out on iOS. I don't know nine, and it's playing all those old games because the same thing happened on our iPhones. Mm. And I I got this great Sonic racing game. I still like to play. <laughs> you know, or X-Men the arcade game or something that they're not going to update. So, uh, But it, that is coming up. When is that release officially? Uh, uh, officially today. Oh, today? Yeah, it released around, uh, I believe, uh, 1 to 2 o'clock Eastern time. Well, being that I do run a majority of my business yes. off of my laptop, <laughs> I will not be updating mine anytime soon. I do have I an old laptop that I might throw it on. Um, so... The, the one where the battery has been removed and almost blew up. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we'll, maybe we'll throw it on there and see what happens. Uh, so yeah, I might do that. I might poke at that soon. Um, awesome. So go check that out. And of course, if you're just like, oh, I do word processing on my on my laptop, you're probably okay. You know. Yeah. So. But you know, I hate to say it. Given what ha- I know, iOS, macOS, related but different. Given the little issue they had with iOS 13, mm-hmm. with it being oh yeah, wait a minute, <laughs> big, a big old bugginess going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I already updated three times. You know, it took. I didn't talk about this on the show. It took me um <laughs> like five days to finally get my my watch to repair and update after I got it back because I got it back Ooh. the. I got it back the day after iOS 13 came out, and I had already okay. updated. And I was like, "Oh, you need a new mm-hmm. version, and you need to restore and pair." And it was just nothing was connecting. Uh, it was it was, so I was had to go like an extra four days without my watch, on top uh, of like the 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 four that it took to repair. So, mm. anyways, but nice new refurb of my uh, watch three running OS six. So, there you go. <laughs> but um, awesome, Dave Ponder. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sorg. Thanks for having me. Uh, real quick before we get out of here, I want to give a shout out to uh, what we're doing around here. Psychic Media Services, uh, be your sidekick in your superhero project. We're doing a lot of stuff, including podcasts, live production, and so much more. Websites, builds, uh, social media uh, out of here, out of the studios here at Sorgatron Media in Beachview. Go check out everything at Sorgatron. I'm sorry, that's the other thing. Sidekick Media Services dot com for more information uh dave bonner you are the tiny shutter podcast you are prof pod on all the social medias yep pretty much if you look out there on twitter so you can see me do technology photos and yelling at wrestling shows yes that happens lots lots of yelling at wrestling shows uh photography on instagram including um uh, trying weird foods over the last couple days Hmm. um and on the day flash app which is all photography, a little more serious photography. Try there. Uh, just like the good days of Instagram back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Before all the ads, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Before all the ads. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes I go back to the beginning of my Instagram. I'm like, look at all the filters. <laughs> Man, this photo's crunched. Man, what's what are we <laughs> what were we thinking? Also, our phones were like a quarter the size they are now. Exactly. <laughs> Producer Missy here, keeping everything straight. Remind me, I need to read ads uh, sometimes. Uh, and uh, actually contributing a lot to this week story-wise. I really appreciate that. Uh, Producer Missy, you'll be, I don't know, you, you do stuff. I feel like I should plug you, but I don't know what to plug other than the other thing, everything that you're involved in, we already plugged. She's just looking at me. Okay. Actually, uh, I was working on show notes because Producer... Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Doing producer things. But yes, uh, we've, we've got a lot of fun projects, as Sorg mentioned. Uh, tipping our hand into just a little bit of everything these days. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's building websites and doing social media stuff is apparently my jam these days. And you're going to help me uh, not go insane tomorrow night when we do uh, live from Pit Fight. Uh, that should be going stream. I think we got internet lined up and everything for uh, streaming that for the Wrestling Mayhem show. It's for a good cause, Connor's Cure. Uh, so go uh, look up uh, Pit Fight, University of Pittsburgh, Greensburg over there and uh, and and donate if you're not going and, and keep an eye out for our stream too uh, for if, that. 
of course, I do need to, even though she's not here, um, mm-hmm. I, I do need to mention Katie's doing some awesome stuff too with the scare house. Uh, and pitch works. Yeah, and she was on she was on Pitchworks right. last, last week. Last week, mm-hmm. uh, talking a lot about the Scare House uh, and and everything that they're doing over there too. So if you want to see the deep dive into that conversation, and with our good friend Scott McTaggart, he's due. We need to get him back on the show soon. He's due. He's due. It's been a little bit. Um, Pittsburgh Current will be uh, Thursday morning. We had a uh, um, some great conversations last week with the uh, um, can't remember her name, uh, but <laughs> uh, running for a D- uh, Allegheny County DA. District Attorney, um, good conversations there, and uh, they're doing some good stuff um, on that line too. Uh, new podcast out this week on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed, Super Feed, yeah, Master Feed, and at SorgatronMedia.com. Our friends at Thrifty Podcast, Bardic Mystery Tour, uh, Bold, Bold Pittsburgh Sports uh, has has a new episode from late last week. So go check that out. A lot of great podcasting happening here in the <laughs> Pittsburgh area, and also a tie shutter too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you Dave Potter for joining us thanks so much again and thank you everybody for joining us on this weird time uh, and uh, we'll be back I think back 7pm Eastern time Tuesday night on our Facebook live thank you everybody you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.